Hello everybody. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. So to part uh, three. <laughs> I shouldn't be struggling, should I, on part three? Um, but <laughs> so there we are. So welcome to part three again. And um, this time we're working on the next section of the quilt and uh, I'll wait for some of you to join. I know it's irritating, but I will. Um, we are, of course, this is, for, if you're a YouTube watcher now, this is a recording. Hi, Gemma. This is a recording um, from about an hour or so earlier this evening. Unfortunately, I can't record straight to YouTube at the moment. I don't know why. These things happen. We'll, we'll sort it out at another date. But for this uh, 12 days of Christmas um, on YouTube, it'll always be an hour later thereabouts it depends on how quickly i can download it off the laptop <laughs> onto a video for youtube so um please uh, bear with me on that and i'm sure you're okay about it at the end of the day hi dawn hi margaret um at the end of the day if you want to watch it live you can obviously log into facebook and look for lizzie curtis and you'll find me um beavering away live at seven o'clock now, normally on a Thursday evening, I'm live in my members group. So you're very privileged to have me here. Uh, very, very rarely in the last nearly five years have I um, done anything other than go live in my members group at seven o'clock. Um, and that happens every single week. And I've probably only missed half a dozen, I think, in probably nearly five years. So um, that's not a bad record. <laughs> and because uh, it, it's great fun. It's great fun and I love it. And um, yeah, so we all get together doing lovely projects and all sorts of things. Goodness me, I can't even list the hundreds of things we've done over the last um, uh, five years. So, uh, as I say, uh, if you're one of my members, and I'm sure a lot of you are going to be watching today, um, welcome to the the dark side, <laughs> to Lizzie Curtis rather than Lizzie's sewing group, the badge. <laughs> um, Yes, so uh, it, I just wanted, um, certainly I wanted Kath to have a bit of a rest. Um, I figured also um, just doing the one live hour on a Thursday was enough for any anybody. So <laughs> I thought I'd give myself a little bit of a rest as well. Um, so, uh, but I really appreciate the fact that the, the members were very kind to me and said, yes, I can have Thursday off, but I'm here anyway. <laughs> and like I say, we're working on part three of the quilt and um, it's going very well. And I've seen some lovely um, pictures so far of work that's been done and um, they're looking absolutely fantastic. Um, there, there's been alternatives to using the what we're calling the blank space. I can't remember names, so I do apologise. Um, with with the stripes, and I'm going to talk, if I remember, I want to talk to you about that. Um, and um, diff different fabrics, different colourways, or I'm using white all the time, so I tend to talk about using white than any other colour. Um, I've seen all sorts of colours, you know, dark blues and, uh, all, well, all sorts. So it's been great. Now, if you want to um, post pictures, please ask to join the Making It Special group. It used to be the Making It Monday group, but we no longer do that. Um, hi, Sabina. Uh, so please look for uh, Making It Special. Facebook group and ask to join we will let you in <laughs> and uh, unless you, unless you're a business we don't let businesses in or strange people but I think pretty much you're okay oh D um, Dawn says she's wearing her badge as well hi Kath hi Carol I'll have a look at the names in just a second um, yes so if you want to post pictures and show off your your lovely work and why shouldn't you then uh, put it in the making it special group obviously I've got the privilege of putting it on my own page but with pages like mine you uh, people can't comment and add a, add a photo I'm sure you could at one stage I'm sure that was possible but um, anyway that facility has been taken away from us so the only place you can post really is in the making it special group um right um oh shirley shirley's got covid oh dear sorry about that shirley she says she's um, still testing positive um oh thank you Gemma. um oh it's a wretched thing isn't it um 
I don't think it's quite as bad as um, it was very at the beginning, perhaps with all the um, uh, the, the jabs. <laughs> It's, uh, it's kind of um, making it a little bit better for us, but still horrid, 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 horrid. So get well soon. In fact, get well anybody that's been poorly. And I just um, read something from Rosina, one of my ladies, to say that she'd cracked a couple of ribs over Christmas. It's like, you know, stay off the brandy. Stick to sherry. <laughs> so I hope you're looking, um, I hope you're looking after yourself, Rosina and Shirley and, and anybody else that's poorly. I'm sure there's lots of you. Don't, don't list out all your illnesses, otherwise we'll lose track of what we're supposed to be doing. <laughs> but anyway, so um, uh, we've, got, we've got a fair few people watching now, so I can, I can I kind of start really. Uh, oh, hello, Dee Dee. What time is it there with you in Australia? I'm thinking it's very early in the morning. I'm thinking it's about four or five in the morning. And it's still summer, isn't it? So I expect you're nice and warm. <laughs> but our turn will come. It's literally around the corner. <laughs> oh, bless your heart, Shirley. Mm, not good, not good. Right, um, blowing a hoolie in Belfast. It really is windy. It's the tail end of that wretched hurricane. Or... Yes, is it a hurricane, have they called it? Funny name, beginning with G, isn't it? Anyway, um, <laughs> and I digress, of course, as usual. Uh, oh, 5.30 a.m., I wasn't far out then, Dee Dee. Oh, well, um, you go back to sleep, put your alarm on. I promise I won't shout too much. <laughs> right, let's, get, let's just go on the, quickly on the overhead here. Oh, I haven't zoomed you in. You can see my entire desk. One moment, caller. Let's zoom you in. That'll do. Great. <laughs> oh, see. Catch me out. Catch me out. Why don't you? Right. Uh, okay. So we have done. Oh, sorry. I shout in, Dee Dee. Sorry. I'll try to. I'll try. The leather, weather is lousy. We've not had much of a summer yet. Oh, my gosh. I've got friends going over there. When? This weekend, for all, till February. So hopefully it's here. I don't know where the, uh, what part of Australia they're going. Anyway, so we've done this section here. This is what we've done. Part one, part two, or day one, day two, were, was this part here, okay? And I took some pictures, I forgot to upload them, so I'll do that later. So we've done straight stitch on our leaves and stem. We've done buttonhole stitch around here. Two different ways of doing buttonhole stitch, which is always quite interesting to see and a cross hatch. Now I know this doesn't come across on the screen very well, um, but hopefully my pictures on my page that I've taken today in daylight will look a bit better, okay? And, and on side camera, I don't think it was too bad. So that was part one, part two. Let's pop that to one side and hopefully tonight, well, no, actually, I'm thinking we'll join it to the others, but the next part, which is this part here, is day three, well, part three, part four, so we'll see how far we can get tonight and then we'll finish that section off tomorrow night. And then if we get ahead of ourselves even more, we can start on um, the, the tall flower. So, um, oh, Anne says, so Lizzie, I've missed, so, missed you so much. Can't wait to start mine being getting some fabric today. Oh, Anna, oh, what sort of fabric? Oh, how lovely. I do love a bit of fabric shopping, you won't believe it. Oh, here's Rosina. Sharp me to quilt, yes. Oh, I was just telling them, I was just telling them, Rosina, how poorly you've been. Gosh, it's been dreadful for some people this this um, this Christmas time. Um, right, yes, so uh, part three, part four. This is what we're going to be doing, okay? And um, you should have now a full set of um, flowers. This is... Um, they are all loaded onto the website, including that, that one in blue and yellow. So there, it's a PDF, you can just download it, you can print it off, and you can mark it like I've done, so you know what you're doing, okay? Or you know what's to come, or, you know, you can get yourself prepared. So like I say, we've got a full complement of flowers now. So we've got the, the three flowered or three headed daisy. We've got, I've been calling this tulip. Um, so the tulip is on there as well now. It looks like I've got more paper than I should have there. Uh, we've got the scalloped 
edge circle which we, uh, flower which we've com just completed and we've got the tall flower now that one is about 15 inches tall okay um, so that comes out quite big um, so just to let you know that that's quite, uh, it's really quite a big flower but um, it fits into this fabulous 20 inch section here okay so it works out really well um, now while I remember, because this this is something I might not remember, <laughs> when I said to you earlier about I'd seen that one lady, I'll, I'll use my pen, one lady had strip pieced this section here, and and I'm ever so sorry I can't remember. Please say who you who you are, so other because it all sounds so rude. But I've got a memory like a a goldfish. So um, she had strip pieced this um, with, I might be the same fabrics as her flowers, but whatever the case, it looked great. And she said, um, I, I thought I wouldn't use just one whole piece. I would strip piece it, which is great because obviously then you've got, you'll have four sections and you could strip piece, you know, along here. You could go um, uh, horizontal as well as vertical. Now I had a thought, I had a thought, a thunk a couple of days ago um, about the border. Now um, the border is is one inch. I've written it down here. It's well, it's one and a half inch to cut. But when we get to it, I'll give you the information. And it's two and a half inches to cut for this one. So this is one and a half. This is two and a half. Uh, we're not going to mitre. We're just going to do you know strips and join them on so they're nice and easy to do. Um, but what I did think that we could do, if you're up for it, and I think this could be quite nice, is to actually do piano keys. So in other words, um, use the fabric that you used your, for your flowers and you would end up with a border that's, that's well, I think they call it piano keys. I sometimes don't take any notice of what other people do. Um, but it's just like that and you could use all the fabrics um, in, in your flowers and your background and your your backing fabric, you know, all of the colours mixed up um, in a piano key border. And I think that would look rather lovely. And I think well, I think I'd be looking at probably four and a half inches, four inches finished for that. To, so it's about that big. And I think that could look rather nice. And I'm erring on the side of doing that. <laughs> It's a lot of cutting. I mean, you can you can do salvage to salvage and then cut. You know, we'll we'll sort it out nearer the time. And I'll I'll, sh I'll do some with you. Um, so it's a lot of cutting, a lot of strip piecing. But I think it would look rather nice, um, and it might lift the whole thing up. Yeah, it might make it quite jazzy. That's what I'm thinking. Quite jazzy because this is very subtle. Um, I, and I like that, uh, that's why I designed it like that. But I think by adding a picana pecan, key border all the way around, it could look really nice. So, um, yeah, Helena says, I love piano key borders. Yeah, and Kath says that'd be fabulous. Dawn says that would look, that's a brilliant idea. Well, it's another thought that I had in my head, which they come out at peculiar times of the day, and then I have to try and remember what my lovely thought was. <laughs> three o'clock in the morning or five o'clock in the morning or whatever. Uh, my admin team know that I wake up sometimes with such crazy ideas. They have to put up with me such a lot. Um, yeah, so this is the section that we're going to deal with. Now, I've got a little tip and a trick for you tonight. You'll be very pleased to know. I'm going to use that as my my template. Let's just get rid of the, those. Um, did you know and I'm going to do this and I'm trusting that it will work because sometimes it can be a bit temperamental. Not often, but it can be. Did you know you can print directly onto your heat and bond? Now, <clears throat> of course you can do it with bond or web, but I do have issues with bond or web. <laughs> it's a great product because it's very light. It's a very, very fine mesh. And textile artists really love using it because it's so fine and it, it adheres everything really well. Um, but I do have issues with it splitting from the, the back. With um, Heat and Bond, I absolutely 100% never have that problem. So it's perfect for going through your printer. Um, so it's something maybe you can try. Now then, 
some of the pattern pieces. Let's just have a quick look at um, pattern pieces. So there's the pattern pieces there, right? And I say to you, trace and cut six, 12, six, three, one of each, to create the one that we're going to do tonight. And I don't want you to use, for instance, 12 sheets of heat and bond to um, print that particular petal. That would be crazy. And the amount of space you've got there is um, insane. So if anybody wants to do um, this printing technique, would you let me know? because I can give you a PDF, or yeah, PDF is better for you really, with all of the elements um, printed, okay? I'm gonna print a different one to this, but rest assured you would have six leaves, 12 petals, six petals, three circles, etc. And that's one, one daisy pattern, okay? So let me know, because I'm quite happy to do that for you. But it's whether I would test your printer out before you bother asking, because if your printer can't handle it and it gets itself into a state, because it can, and it, it could ju jam up your printer and become the nuisance that you don't want it to be, then, then it's no point you asking me for the PDF, but I'm quite happy to do it, right? So, um, there's two ways of doing this, and I, I am quite lazy, really. Can you believe I am quite lazy? So, you need, ideally, you're needing a A4 size piece of um, heat and bond. Now, I do it slightly smaller. So, I want you to see, it's hanging over there by a couple of mil, and it's hanging over there by a couple of mil, okay? And I'm just going to, because my hands are shaking badly today, I do have episodes, um, I'm going to draw and then cut. If I try to cut around this, these pieces here, it, I would not be successful. So I'm going to draw around. So there's my template done, just about see it. And there's two ways of doing this. So let me just cut this out. Try and get a good straight edge. If you've got a nice straight edge there, then leave it, um, uh, leave it, uh, leave it alone. Don't cut into it. Help, help keep the nice straight edge, and try and put that edge inside your printer first. Okay. Let's pop that on the floor. So there's our piece of heat and bond. There's my straight edge, so I might want to just put an arrow so I know. I mean, that's not too bad, but it's got a bit of a crinkle. That's nice and straight. The whole thing is crinkled. Ideally, you're going to buy this sort of stuff on the roll. It's much better. So what you can do is you can run an iron. So, for instance, you could get this piece of paper, and it actually doesn't really matter that it's something that you want to keep. And you could run your iron literally a quarter inch along the top of that edge to bond your paper to your heat and bond. And then you've got a carrier sheet. OK, so that's one way of doing it. And I did that for years because I didn't trust my printer, basically. But touch wood and you know this is going to not work. You know this. I'm just saying that. Um, touch your hood that should go in the printer on its own okay and with my printer my printer if you look at the front screen my printer goes in around and out like that so it it, it curves like that right if you've got a front loading um, printer and it comes whoosh throughout then your paper needs to be uppermost again if your printer is like mine you want to, you want to imagine it going around so you want the um you want the glue side facing you when the when you put the paper in is that right <laughs> i did this several times today and you know i'm going to get it wrong don't you yes <laughs> to be honest if you print on the wrong side it doesn't matter <laughs> 
I've now got to think about it. So when I do my postage labels, I have to sit there and, and I have to imagine it going through the printer. So it goes in like that, paper up. So it, that's kind of, no, it's glue side up. I've got it, I've got it. Right, I'm gonna go and feed this into my printer. <laughs> I should have done this beforehand. Uh, just amuse yourself on the front screen there, just to say. Let's just show you um, on the, let me just move the camera to there. I could have done that before actually. Right, I'm gonna put this in my printer. Oh dear me. Let's see. So blue side up, put it, putting it in the, the tray, closing the tray, we will see. It's like an assault course around my room. <laughs> right, I'm gonna to go to my printer. Let's let's see if it works. To be honest, it always works, and I've got evidence in my bin. <laughs> but um, what it means is that all of the shapes are printed directly onto the paper side of the heat and bond. You can cut all the shapes out really easily. They're 100% accurate, and you can pop them onto your fabric really quickly. So it's a great way. It's, it's not a cheats way. It's a quicker way of getting your shapes down. Let's go and have a look. <laughs> oh phew <laughs> I didn't have to I didn't have to say that disclaimer did I at all right so if we go on the overhead <laughs> so um so you might you might find that your printer shoves things around, moves. Th my I, I don't know if my printer needs a lining, but it doesn't matter. There's little chunky bits here, which is not the drawing. It's my printer. So, but come on, that's brilliant, isn't it? And then on the other side, we've got the glue. You can see the glue. So all I need to do now, and this I can use this now for my second flower, is um, obviously do what we normally do and cut around. Now obviously you've got waste, and I did talk to you about that, and you could keep all these waste pieces in a little box ready for another time. And you might want to do some tracing one day with, with heat and bond, and it's actually quite therapeutic, isn't it? Quite mindful. So it will print. I just gave a disclaimer there about <laughs> saving my own neck, I think that's what it is. Um, so yeah, so it, that is a great way of doing things really quickly. If you've got a graphics program, you could crop all your pieces down and cut pieces out and all that sort of thing. But um, I tried to do that on Word earlier, so, and, and I'm not very good with Word, but I tried to do that with Word earlier and um, a, a epic fail, only because I don't use Word very much. But I do have a graphics program that I can chop and change and cut things out and all sorts, it's great. So, um, so you might have that facility and I'm quite happy to, you know, sort of really squidge all these things down so you only use one or even maximum two. But even that one with the three daisies, with all of, you know, the 16 petals, this, that and the other, I easily I got it onto one page. So I mean, you could probably double it up, to be honest, and do two flowers. So there we are. So now you see I've got that sheet ready. I'll shove it over there for the next time I want to use it, which is great. Okay, so that was the first thing I wanted to do. Now, um, the second thing, let's have a look at this, um, this design that we're doing tonight. You can see I've kind of cut it out and laid it out. Um, you have to forgive me, I've got a little black mark there. Uh, Millie was treading all over my flower, uh, my f fabrics the other night, and I think it's a little bit of a paw print going on. Now, um, in the pattern, let me see if I can get this, because my pattern might be easier to see on my pattern yeah uh, let's bring it up a bit so on the pattern do you see this shape this shape is sort of going over to the right this one is going over to the uh, the, the right <laughs> sorry the right and this one is going over to the left okay so going that way kind of what is it would it be um, clockwise clockwise and clockwise okay goes that way so um, I've done the same so these are the 12 petals you need for that particular way and then you've got six petals going the other way uh, I mean you, you don't have to do it like that you could do all the 18 petals the same 
So, you know, um, it's, some of these things are just a guide for you. You've obviously got the placement as normal. Um, so you know roughly what, what it will look like if it was a skeleton. Um, and you can, I mean, to be perfectly honest, you could lay your pieces over the top of that and you could use your iron and bond them together on here. Um, uh, or I'll tell you what you could use, which I completely forgot about, was the, the mat. Now then, I wonder if I've got it handy. Because if you've got an applique mat, which is super, um, again, that's absolutely perfect. Depends, it depends if you want to glue the whole thing together before you stitch, right? So an applique sheet looks like this. Obviously, you're not going to put the flowers on. Let me just move that. And what you can do, if you put this underneath, that over the top, yeah, you can just about see it. And then you can lay your pieces on. Oh gosh, I forgot to take the paper off these, never mind. You can lay your pieces over the top. Right, and you can build up your design on this, and you can actually let's do it that way. You can actually glue all your pieces together, but it does depend if you want to um, stitch it as like a like a badge. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> you can build up the whole thing, pop it down, and then um, it'll peel off. Has, any, has anybody used this? Has anybody used this applique mat? Uh, oh yeah, Jeanette says, I was just about to say about the applique mat as well. Oh, Jeanette says she has her mat. Yeah, um, and, and it's a great way of building up, it, but it does depend on if you want to build up the layers or directly on here and then transfer the whole thing as one piece onto your fabric, right? Um, because, <clears throat> oh, Dawn says she has. Um, yeah, Helena says she's, they're excellent. Tonight we're going to do it differently, which of course that's typical. Well, we can use this another night because I've got things in my head that I got planned. So um, let's pop that to one side um, and you'll be able to see over the next couple of nights. I, I don't know when I'll do it, maybe tomorrow, I don't know, I haven't thought about it. But um, we can, uh, but tonight I'm going to do it um, differently. Okay, so let's get this back in. And I'm going to take all my little petals away. Oh, try and keep them safe. I haven't taken the paper off and that could kick myself because obviously that's time saving. But and again, you didn't really want to see me cut all these out either. Although I did enjoy it. Does everybody else enjoy? Oh, by the way, I meant to say to you, when you, if you do this heat and bond technique, yeah, where we print, um, when you put the heat of the iron onto the ink, it kind of um, it, it doesn't um, um, doesn't blur it. it. It kind of heat sets it, so you don't have to worry about transference of ink. Okay, so these are my petals. Uh, my sorry, my leaves. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the. Let me move this over. Bring this in so you can see both. It's also a bit dark here. I'll just move that away a bit more. That's it. That'd be a bit better. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to take the paper off. So don't forget with heat and bond, you just curl the, the edge and it comes off as quick as blink. I'm going to try and get that in the center. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to just do the leaves first. So which way? That way. So roughly, because I'm not going to stick the stems down now. Ah, oh, Jeanette says she got hers when Adrienne did her applique pieces. Yeah, ideal. Absolutely ideal. Mm, definitely. Like I say, it depends on... Like I say, it depends on what you want, how, how you want it to be. Because I, I always say, when you do it as a, a complete image on your applique mat, it's almost like a badge. Um, but then you can't have your stitching, your stitching has to stop, like we did on the very first flower, your stitching has to stop 
at the edge. So in other words, like with this one, we would have to stop there or start there, stop, go around again if you want, but that's a stop and start line here. Whereas what we're going to do tonight is we're going to just do the leaves, then do the stem, the stems, <laughs> and um, then let's just try and get this the same. So I'm looking at this, I'm looking at that. You could put the leaves on top if you want. So I'm, I'm tucking mine underneath. You don't have to do it that way. So let's just... Um, and the other thing which I meant to get, here we go, is my pokey tool. Because nothing is stuck down. That doesn't want to move. There we go. And we want that just at a slight angle. You don't want it to be, you know, rigid, parallel. It would look a bit odd. And then we've got another leaf over here. Oh, I keep, keep putting the paper down. <laughs> so that's about there, would you say? Um, Kath says she uses hers a lot. Yeah, well, it's, it's lovely. They are, they are lovely. Um, like I said, it depends on, on what you want to do. Right, last one. Let's try not to put the paper down this time. And that one goes, tucks under there. All right. Let me put my iron on. My machine wires are very, very close to my iron tonight. Let me just move them out of the way. I've got to keep my eye right on them right and that one just tucks under there it doesn't you know you don't have to tuck it under so far it depends on what you but you know it's a personal opinion isn't it and how you like things i quite like that that's pretty much like that isn't it i think that'll do so what i want to do is stitch the six leaves first and I'm going to stitch them independently of the stem. Now, just so this doesn't move, I'm just going to just tickle the leaves in place. So I'm just going to take my little iron. By the way, this new iron, um, it's a swan. I'm getting on very well with it. It's a nice little size and actually is in this for the steam as well. Yeah, I'm enjoying it very much. And it was only about 18 pounds, something like that. So look, I've tickled the, I've tickled the leaves. <laughs> so now I'm going to take this away. Now what you could do, of course, is to make a little mark where you put, um, even if it's a pencil mark, as long as it's very light. So where the stems were, for instance, um, you could put a little mark maybe here or something like that so you know where it's going to be. But, you know, I'm going to trust that I've got it right. <laughs> uh, yes, famous last words. So now we can go in and actually make sure that those are bonded down nicely. Now, don't forget, you've got this is your ten and a half inch square. So if I bring in the pattern, this is your ten, ten and a half inch square just here. And um, it has the um, stabiliser on the back, okay? Now, I, we've discussed this now quite a few times, so look back on part one, part two, to see what I say about uh, stabilisers. You don't have to, but it, I think it makes your stitching nicer yourself. And I'd rather be cautious than muck it up. Right, I'm going to get my machine in, so bear with just a second. Um, it's on a peculiar angle at the moment. I've got so much on my desk. This is what happens after a while. You get a build-up, don't you, of stuff. Here we go. Um, I've got a nice angle on it tonight. Again, if you want to test out your stitches, test your stitches out. It's really important that you, you're happy with what you're looking at. I've got dark green thread. Well, actually, I've got a variegated thread on tonight. Um, so we'll see what that looks like on the leaves. Um, so you can see there, it's, it is lovely and variegated. I thought you might be able to see it a little bit better. 
Okay, so don't forget, the all of the templates are on my website, lizzycurtis.com. You, you don't have to pay for anything. If you want to send me a coffee, you can. Oh, thank you also to all of the people that have sent me coffees so far. Thank you very much indeed. Very much appreciated. I'm just going to try and get it in a bit more for you. So because we know these points are going to be under the stem, I'm going to start and stop at the point, okay? And I'm just using my regular foot. I know it doesn't look like a regular foot, but it is. Let me just sort my wires out. Don't know why I'm having issues with my wires tonight, but I am. You're covered in bits as well, gosh. Uh, yeah, so we're going to start and stop <laughs> at the points. If I can get my foot control in the right place. I'm just using my regular foot. And like I said last night, if you've got a, um, a rabbit and a tortoise thingy, which I have on here, let me turn it down. Um, use that. Um, because it will slow you down. I don't have a lift up control with this machine. This machine is very, very manual, but I absolutely adore it. I've just come off the leaf there, which is not ideal. Take your time. It does stop with the needle down, thank goodness. And that's a bonus. But other than that, it's pretty, pretty manual. So, just take your time going round, keep lifting that presser foot up so you can pivot and then you can just break your thread. There we go, you can have a look at that. So you can see one row stitching and a variegated thread is absolutely gorgeous. So let's do the next leaf. So we'll carry on, we'll do all six leaves um, and then we will do the stems. And then tonight, if I've got time, we're going to do the little petals are going to be free motion. Now, I'm not going to go into great details about free motion um, because I'm doing a free motion workshop on the 14th of January. So that all of the information will be given then. On, you can pick my brains. <laughs> and I will do the best I can for you. So that's the second flower, uh, second petal there. I just need to chop that little bit of a thread off. So by doing it this way, you are bur burying, yes, your um, loose ends, you know, your ends here, so it doesn't look scruffy. Well, it looks scruffy on the back. I'm, I don't care about the back. But on the front, you, your, your ends, what else do you call them, threads, are going to be hidden. So just make sure you know where your stop and start points are. Don't forget where your stems are. Now often or not the um, the bond web, the heat and bond, sorry, is stable enough for you to stitch your pieces without a stabilizer on the back. Um, because you've got a layer of glue, it tends to stabilise the fabric anyway. So look at that, that's lovely. And you can see the variegatedness. Um, so having a think again, I'm pretty sure that's my point there. So I thought it would be quite a good idea to show you as many different ways of doing a plique. Um, the only one that I won't do um, because my hands shake too much, should be silly, is needle turn. I'm, I'm happy to do needle turn without anybody watching because I can steady my hands, but I can't do it mid-air or, you know, away from me as I would have to on a video. So again, I'll show you every leaf, they all look the same. <laughs> so um, that's the only one that I won't show you because it's, it's just not practical for me. So I hope you understand. So just take your time, as I say, and like, oh, we're not going at a fairly decent sort of pace. We're, we're not in a rush anyway, are we? Do it at uh, your own speed. So let's uh, go around here. And, and it's not so stressful, is it? Not so stressful. 
So again, round there, and the last one. Are you all concentrating? Because I can't see any comments at all, so I'm assuming you're concentrating. Right. So the last one. And again, all of these leaves, flowers, you can always use your decorative stitches. Um, and if you're not sure about your decorative stitches, maybe it's something that you've never used, do have a little play. Um, don't do it on your best piece of work, just in case you, you know, you get into a panic and things go horribly wrong. Um, thank you, Marion. Marion says she's watching. Uh, so there's all my leaves. They're sort of up in midair a bit, aren't they? So let's uh, let's have another look at how this is going to be on on the overhead. Let's go back to where we were. So get the machine out of the way. <coughs> And because I've got that wretched mark there, um, it actually helps me because it, it means I know that that's the left hand side and we've got it the right way around. So again, make sure your iron is on, which is it is on. And then we get our, our, our stems here, which I've taken the papers off. Again, get your pattern in so you get all your pieces the right way around so you can see the shape of that. So let's uh, get that shape going here. I think that's um, that's about right, isn't it? So if I pop it there, pop it there, I'm happy. Mm, I'm happy with that. And then we've got this little straight bit here that goes underneath. So let's pop that in. And of course, what you could do, and in fact, shall we do it? We'll do the bits. We'll do these stems that go underneath. Uh, Jerry says, I haven't started the project yet, but just used my printer to print on the heat and bond. It worked really good. Yay, Jerry! That's brilliant because you know what? Sometimes you think, oh my gosh, I'm scared to death of this. This is not going to happen. But you, that's really brave. And that, I'm not trying to be patronising because sometimes we, we won't do something because we're really worried it's going to fail. And none of us like failure, do we? So well done. You know, that's brilliant. So let's let's keep to our old fashioned, old fashioned way of doing this. So I'm going to move that slightly and that one slightly. Now, if you're a bit like my hands are, if I put my hands straight, they're shaking like mad, but I could use my pokey tool and rest my hands on my mat, which gives me a little bit of stability and I can use my pokey tool, my stiletto, to move my pieces around. And they really do behave well. So I'm only just poking them about so you can see what I'm doing. So look, that's, that's looking okay, isn't it? I'm really happy with that. So we only want to stitch and stick these two little bits here. So let's do that again, what we did before. Let's just stick some of it down. Okay. And we'll take that away. Because these stems are underneath, it means we can do exactly the same again. We can stop and start at these inner points, yeah? Do, we, do you get it? Do you get it? Ah, right, let's, let's have a look. Let's go back onto the machine. Let's get onto the um, side camera, maybe. That would be good. Let me get rid of the mouse. There's a lot of clutter on my desk, guys. <laughs> and you can see my room. Oh, dear me. Right. So let's uh, start and stop where we know it's not going to be seen. And you don't need to go... So do you see this inner bit here? You don't need to go across that. You can if you want. But you don't need to because your stem's going to go over the top of it. So let's just take our time again. Move it around. Try and keep, you know, good distance away from the edge, sixteenth of an inch maybe. Um, no more. Otherwise, you know, sometimes it looks a bit ugly. Um, go across the top on that one because you need your stitch to come down. And then just take your time again. And then 
Oh, it's just so lovely and relaxing. You've no idea. I'm so enjoying myself. Yeah, so I meant to say thank you, thank you to those guys that have sent me a coffee. Um, I did um, suggest that could I swap it for a, a piece of cake as well because <laughs> I might get, you know, all that caffeine. I might get a bit hyper. So the lady who'd, who'd, who'd sent me a coffee said she didn't mind. I could swap it for a piece of cake, which I'm very happy about. Very happy. <laughs> oh, dear. Right, so down the other side. And you don't have to do anything fancy, especially if you're using, well, like me, I'm using a variegated thread and um, it's making it come alive quite near the camera. I'm happy about that. I don't mind you seeing anything that I've done. Okay, and if you want to look at the back. Right old mess. Nobody's going to see the back of this, so I'm not bothered. So what you could do is you could add these, you know, the centre bits in. Um, and I might do that um, tomorrow when I've got five minutes because uh, we, I want to move on to the um, free motion. We'll have about five minutes, I think, or perhaps, perhaps seven minutes, something like that. So, okay, so that's as far as we've got. We know that's the right way around. So now we need to put the stem in. Um, just be mindful of your your threads if you've jumped over. Just do um, do trim that away because you, if you don't, if, and you're using a darker thread and your stem. Uh, it obviously is the same shape, but it might be lighter than the thread you're using. You might see it, so keep it uh, keep it nicely trimmed. Okay, so again, we're putting that stem down. We know exactly where it's going to go because we've got our little leaves should fit nicely underneath. Our other stems should fit nicely underneath. We shouldn't see any points, and we shouldn't see any ends of the stems. Yeah, what's that, Yvonne? Can you swap it for a sherry, Yvonne? That would make my day. <laughs> Actually, I haven't had a sherry all of Christmas. I've had two Baileys, not at the same time, one one night, one the other. I don't drink very much. My girls don't drink at all. It's true. They don't drink at all. It's good for them, that's what I say. Uh, I will keep. No, I'm going to switch it off for a minute. So now I've ironed my stem down. So that's nice and secure. So we'll give that a little stitch. Now, when it comes to free motion earning, the um, flowers, hold on, I'll just swap you over. There we go. When it comes to free motion earning the flowers, um, I think it would be very, it would be much better if we ironed the whole flower down rather than one petal at a time. So in this instance, we're doing it one piece at a time so we can lose our ends underneath um, each next section with the flowers um, because we're going to free motion um, I think it would be very tedious to do one petal at a time of course you can there's no rules to say you can or you can't but in this instance um, I would say we're just going to glue a uh, glue yeah glue the whole flower down now you'll notice I'm holding my thread here because we're we've got a piece now that everybody's going to see so I want it to be as neat as I can get it so all those little end thread ends I want to now you know be be sensible and, and um, be neat oops I might have come off there I'm at a funny angle to this I must admit, for years of demonstrating on TV, I um, oh, actually, yeah, no, that, oh, you know what? I'm going to admit a mistake because this is going to be a flower head here. That is the end of my stem. So next time when you do it, start where your flower head is going to be and then your ends will be buried. What a twit. Yes, so years of demonstrating on TV, I tend to sew at an angle anyway. <laughs> just habit. It's just habit. And very, very rarely do I have my machine in front of me. It's just how it is. I have it in front, but at an angle. And also it's good for, the, for you to see. So how silly of me. Yeah, the other end is a flower head, but I'm going to trim 
that thread end there and I'm going to do what I normally do go down come across and then I'm going to go up about two stitches and then break my thread Oops. and you'll see that it does quite a neat job but it would have been better if we'd started up here yeah I just didn't wasn't thinking so there's my stems and leaves done so what size stitch um about 2.2 I'd say Judy about 2.2 uh, when I'm using just the regular um stitch for um applique okay so we need to pick up one of the flowers um I think it's that one because we want clockwise and then anti-clockwise don't we um so let's try what time is it well we've got 10 minutes that's brilliant so we've got six of these to go down so let's get our sheet in let's get that out of the way a bit okay i wish i could get my room a little bit lighter but i have so many lights you'd think it would be really bright in here but it never is and I'm just going to overlap now again you could use your stiletto or your pokey tool whatever you use to make sure that they're all sitting nicely um, and we want to kind of replicate what we've got here so let's put them down probably better to start um, at the side here because we want to overlap so I might adjust that, that first one that I did so where's my stiletto gone here so let's just move these out of the way let's get this one and because they've got the glue on the back they tend to sort of not stick that would be the wrong thing to say but they tend to stay put once you've put them there so let's move that one I'm also going to put a circle down and cover up my points. Okay, now this is the sort of thing that you can do on your mat. So we could get our mat in and put that underneath it and I could follow it. In fact, let's, shall we do that? Let's do it. Let's go crazy. Let's go crazy and do it. <laughs> right so you can just about see it because my my print lines aren't very um deep or dark um it, you i can see it I'm, I'm hoping you can so i'm going to just undo everything that i've just done so what we're going to do is that we're going to place our flowers exactly over the top of the ones the, the und underneath it now because we're dealing with silicon it kind of messes with this a little bit. See, my my flower wasn't as open as this because I did. I had them in a point, but I don't think these are, are they? I can't see underneath here. As long as we're following the the shape, we can't go wrong, can we? <laughs> Famous last words. Right. So this is the sort of thing you can do with an applique mat. Put all your bits down. Use your pokey tool again. Oh, happy with that. Pure genius. <laughs> right, and then the other thing is, because this, you don't want it to, um, if I had some handy, some tweezers, because you don't want to, that's it, look at that. Hard to see in this light. Let me zoom you in a little. there so you can see what I've got to be honest those flowers could come out but I think I might have moved the whole thing to be fair but let's just leave it as it is <laughs> and then you can just get your iron and just put it over the top now what it's doing it's gluing 
all of your layers together where they overlap and it's gluing that tiny little circle to all of the points wherever it touches basically so that should be enough now ideally in the ideal world um, Dawn says, hi Lizzie, you really enjoying this, can this be done as needle turn? I was just talking about that before. If you're going to do needle turn, um, Dawn, you need to add a quarter inch around each of the shapes. So all of these should have a quarter inch added. And yes, of course you can do needle turn, but I, that's something that I'm not going to demonstrate because my hands are too shaky. They really are. I hide it well. <laughs> so ideally you're gonna let it get cold. And then you're just going to lift it up. Now, because these are little pieces, I want you to be super careful. So don't be gung-ho about it. There we go. There's your little flower. So you could do that with all of them. There we go. And then we can bring our piece in and pop it over the top. So we want it about there. Oh, it looks great. I hope I didn't take that out of camera shot there because I forgot we were that close. So it's just a case of just being careful. Okay, so you've now got one solid piece, what I call a badge, because they're all stuck together. Okay. And ideally you want it to be cold before you take it off the applique mat. Looks good, doesn't it? So then we just go in and iron it and there we are it's done it's done and then it's just a case of free motioning we've got five minutes do you want me to do a bit of free motion yay or nay or i can leave it till tomorrow um let me uh, in fact i'll leave that camera just where it is because we might need it for a little, little bit later so do you want me to change my needle not my needle my thread over happy to do it we'll do a little bit shall we couple of things do have a brand new needle in your machine, please. Uh, I'm changing my foot. Let me show you, I'll put you on the side camera. Ooh. Something weird happening to my TV screen. There we go, I've just loosened the nut here. Mine is a funny old machine. Yours will be just a clip off sort of affair or um, a screw of some sort. So I'm putting my yellow thread down on again this is variegated look but you you hardly notice it's quite nice quite subtle and i'll try and get an end that's not curly because i have to thread this like a really old-fashioned machine you ought to see the front of it it's, it's a bit weird when you when you first when you you know when you first see it or get it it's the most fantastic machine if you ever want a just a straight stitch machine um <clears throat> But it's uh... right. So while my foot's still off, um, I'm going to thread my needle because I've got nothing in, in my way. So hopefully it'll thread first stitch time. I've got a top stitch needle in here, which is 80, 12, size 12. Yeah. OK, two different. I'm not going to go into this in great detail because I'm doing my workshop on it. But I will tell you this. You've got two different types of feet. You've got the open toe, which is my thumb, and you can see where you're going with an open toe. I much prefer it. Or you have a closed toe, that thumb, <laughs> which means that it's not gonna pick up any loose edges. The drawback with this is if you haven't stuck your flowers, whatever you're doing down properly, it could catch the edge if it's not stuck down. <clears throat> And that is a pain in the um, rear end. Um, with this one, the full closed affair, you don't. It's, it's fabulous. It's, it's a really good foot to use. And a lot of machines come with this one and not that one. It doesn't matter which one you use. They're both perfectly acceptable. I prefer this because I can see where I'm going. Remember we talked about that special foot last night, about the Benina foot I happen to have? Um, it's not necessarily, it's not uh, just Benina, any um, sewing machine. You can have a satin stitch foot like this. Um, it's a similar thing. It does the job. 
okay um, and that's what these little gadgets do now look mine's an industrial machine so it looks a bit odd but yours you know what yours looks like it's a darning stroke embroidery foot they are fabulous don't be frightened of them you are not going to um, uh, have any uh, problems using these feet you're not suddenly going to keel over or anything like that okay so um let me just move mine in there's my feed dog so i'm just going to lower my feed dogs down you might have seen them just go down when you move it back they never pop up they never pop up it's only when you start machining that the feed dogs pop up so let's pop them back down again um if for instance um you can't see it on screen here but i've got my uh, stitch length if you don't have the facility of dropping your feed dogs just put your stitch length on zero it does exactly the same i've done a whole tv show without dropping my feed dogs i thought i had i had not but i had my um stitch length on zero because that's what i was talking about uh will it be the same using a free motion ruler foot um actually yes a free motion ruler foot is deeper um i'm not sure i've got got one with this machine i haven't got one handy i can show you i can show that tomorrow though jeanette um the only thing with a ruler foot is probably I wouldn't say it was a quarter inch high, the, the, the foot, but it's, it's probably a good eighth of an inch deep. You can't see quite so well, but you absolutely can use that because you use it's free motion that you're doing with a ruler foot. Right, and yes, more, more than acceptable. So, um, like I said, um, uh, blah, blah, blah. we're going to do the whole flower. So what time is it? It's just after eight. So I'll do I'll do a little bit and then we'll stop and then we can carry on tomorrow. Um, I would say practice before you do any free motion. Now I'm just doing a few little stitches kind of on the stop spot because I want to get rid of my tail because I don't want to chew that up in my stitches. But do do three or four stitches on the spot if you can. And then it's just a case of relaxing, which I know for some of you, you'll, you'll say, you've got to be joking. Now, we could go round three times if you want. It, I, I think if you're using the same color thread, I don't think it has the effect of if you're doing sketchy black. See how that's lifting there? And that'll often do that because we're putting um, different sort of pressure on. So I'm not going to do I might do two rows, it looks quite good with two rows. And then I'm just going to hop across to my next petal. The quicker I put my foot down on my machine and the quicker I move the fabric will determine the stitch size. If you're concerned about stitch size, I'm not. It's whatever it is, but it might be your thing. If you end up with massive great stitches, it's because you've moved your fabric too quick. If you've moved your fabric too quick, you could also break a needle. So just chill. My shoulders are down, I'm very relaxed. So that's as much as you'll get out of me, free motion, because I'm doing my free motion course on the 14th of January. Okay, so I'm just hopping across to each flower Turn it if you need to. Take your time. I'm going slowly because you're all watching. And they are little petals. <laughs> okay. So we can go around, I'll go a little bit quicker. Um, I've got regular thread in my bobbin. And I do recommend you do that. Uh, bobbin fill. Nah. Leave that for if you're doing in the hoop embroideries. No, not, not in the hoop embroideries. Um, you know, when you do like Disney characters and stuff like that. Leave it for that. Don't, you don't need it for free motion. It's all right, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't bother. I like to have a fairly good matching thread in the bottom. I think if we looked in my machine now, I've got green because I was doing the leaves. And it will come through, oh, it's a bit big, it will come through, but 
just so I can get this done. Okay, that's all six petals done. I'll show you when I'm done. So then I'm going to go into the middle. So I just jump, jump across basically and get it into a position where you're comfortable. You're in charge. I'm going anti-clockwise, which actually doesn't suit me at all. So I don't know why I did that. And just maybe go around twice. It's up to you really. Maybe you could spiral into the middle. Let's do it. In your, your drawing, basically. And that's what I was going to talk to you about as well. Just one last thing. Um, do use your heat erasable pen if you think that's going to help you. So there you go. Have a look at that. I'll hold it still so it focuses. And I'll take a picture in the morning. So hopefully with natural daylight you get a better idea. So it's slightly variegated, so obviously some places you can see, some places you can't see so well, but it's not bad, is it? Right, okay, um, this part makes me quite nervous. What, the free motion, Jeanette? Um, then in that case, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't put yourself under any pressure. No point. No point at all. <laughs> Do something else. <laughs> we've got plenty. We've had plenty of choices of stitches so far. So there's our first little flower done. Looks really cute. Now don't forget, if you want to on your printer, you can make this bigger. You can make it smaller. So although you've got the pattern with all the bits, um, you can alter them to suit you. Well, I think that looks okay. Right, so that's it for tonight. Um, tomorrow we'll finish the free motion on the other two flowers and we will join the other half to that. So we've, what we're doing is uh, this part here. So we'll join that together and see how we get on. And if we, if we have finished, then the next section is the tall flower. So we can talk about that. Um, or I might have a few extra bits and pieces I can talk to you about and show you. Might do a little bit of, um, if my hands are steady, <coughs> I'll show you needle turn, but it depends on the day with me. And it's nothing to do with the sherry. <laughs> so uh, there we are, that's what we're doing. So get ahead. Get some of these uh, bits and pieces done. Try doing the technique I did tonight where you pop the leaves down first and stitch them, then you do the stems. You saw what I did. Um, and, um, and maybe that's something that you really enjoy. So hopefully you're learning enough to decide what suits you. Yeah, because there's uh, lots of different ways of, of uh, doing these things. Right, thank you very much for joining me again. It's been an absolute treat. We're on uh, day four tomorrow, part four. That means we'll have, we've got nine more to go, including tomorrow night. So we're taking it nice and steady. <coughs> Excuse me. Hopefully you've got five or ten minutes in the day to, to actually try and catch up every day. But you know these videos are going to be there on my page, Lizzie Curtis page, for forever how long. Once they're all loaded onto YouTube, I'll do a playlist and they'll all be all together in one place. And I'll share that link on my page here and in my groups. Right, um, good, okay, if there's any questions, um, I'm happy to look at that afterwards. Sometimes it's difficult when we're live to pick them all up, that is. I try to see all the comments, but it's, it's very difficult when you're concentrating. Right, I'll see you all tomorrow night at seven. Thank you very much for your company. It's been an absolute treat once again. Bye.